All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP Pavilion laptop model 15-CS1065CL. So as you can see, the hinge is broken here. I'm gonna to have to use a thin tool to help uh, push the screen up without breaking it. So I'm just gonna get this in between the two layers and I'm gonna use that to help pull this, okay? So basically we're pushing the, this is hard to show, but we're pushing the screen and the uh, back part together to try and keep it. So we're pulling on the hinge itself and not letting it kind of separate. So this is tough. Hopefully the hinge is not actually broken, but we're gonna pull that, there we go. Okay, and there now you can see we have this open and now it's a little bit easier because you can hold where the actual hinge is, pressing it down and pulling this open. Um, but we're gonna have to get this whole screen assembly out so we can fix that. And yeah, let's go ahead and pop this thing open. So this is gonna be a bit tricky. Let's see if I can record this. You're probably gonna see my legs, but that is what it is. Okay, so I have the screen hanging over the edge of my desk. And what we're gonna have to do is remove all the screws here. So there are hidden screws. I'm gonna just use my fingernail and get under these rubber feet. Okay, at least if I can, let's see. Wow, these rubber feet are in there real good. So usually they're not holding in this strong, but okay, there we go. So we'll peel that up. All right, and you wanna keep these in order. I just put them in the pattern I remove them, all right, on my desk. That way I can make sure I put back the same part where I found it. All right, and yeah, these, wow, these covers are holding on real strong. They're holding on for dear life. So, all right, so yeah get those things out we're gonna get all four okay and oh I guess there's no hidden screws under here interesting there's okay I'm gonna remove the other one just in case because sometimes one will have it and the other won't but uh most of the time it's not that way so yeah as you can see there's nothing there um, it looks like there was almost a hole for a screw there but maybe that's just how they used for injection molding all right, anyways, let's go ahead and remove the screws. So we got three here, and then we got three screws in the front. Uh, let's see. Looks like these are JAS1, and these are probably going to be uh, JAS0 screws. So we're gonna get a JAS1 screwdriver first, and we're gonna pop these screws out. You wanna keep the screws in order, again, because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. And you don't wanna mix them up, because if you do, you can actually damage your computer especially if you put like a screw that's too small or too big in the wrong spot okay all right so we'll get all those three and then we'll get these three and let me see if i can use this screwdriver but most likely not yeah no i don't think so okay so we're gonna switch over to the other one and let's go ahead and remove these screws okay got that one Right, make sure you put good pressure. I wasn't holding the laptop and then it slid away as I was trying to undo the screw. Um, if I remember correctly, this kind of model, it's gonna be very difficult to pop the uh, bottom cover off. So keep that in mind. All right, um, let's go ahead and try with the suction cup. I'm just gonna get my fingernail over here and try and pull up and see if it budges at all. And I don't think it's going to. Yeah, I think this kind of model, I'm going to have to use like um, my metal, thin metal tool to pop that out. But let's go ahead and see if we can go from this side. Sometimes I can get my fingernails in the little gap here and then push with my thumb on the palm rest to pop that out. Um, but it does make it more difficult that the screen is broken here. So I'm going to get my fingernails in and push with my thumbs here. Okay. And... It doesn't seem like the clips are popping out, so most likely that's not gonna work. Let's go ahead and try from the side. Sometimes the side clips are a little bit weaker. There we go, okay. And you wanna be careful not to push on the keyboard. So I'm pushing with my palm on here and then over here, and you can see all these clips kind of popped up. Okay, and, huh, looks like they bent this at some point, okay. All right, unless somehow I bent that, I don't know. That's very fragile if I bent that from that. Okay, anyways, you got this. You can see it's popping up here. Let's see if we can go ahead and pull up here now. And it did pop a little bit. The only thing is 
because we had to open the screen slightly to work on it, um, it's kind of, this is in the way. So let's see if we can go around the front now. So I'm going to get my fingernails in this side and then push with my thumbs and see if it pops. Okay, and it looks like it does. So there we go. Okay, so I can get in from that side. Perfect. Got this one. Okay, then go around the sides as well. And see, I think the clips face different way on the sides. So on the sides, it, oops, the laptop turned itself on. Um, I guess that's good. I can see that the laptop is working, so let me shut it down. Sorry. Okay, anyways, we're going to go on this side and then push from this. And I guess these clips go the opposite way because it pops out from this way. But these clips are super difficult to remove, so, hmm, might have to skip that side. Let's see. So we got this and we got that. So let's see if we can kind of grab this and wiggle it. Sometimes you can like pull it forward or backwards and while you're pulling on it, it should disengage some clips. But in this case, it's not really doing anything. Let's see. Can we use a suction cup in the middle here? No. How about over here? No. There's a clip in the middle that's holding on somehow and I'm not too sure. There we go. So that worked. Sometimes pulling, you got to pull from different angles because you don't know if the clip's holding that way, that way, or that way, or that way. So... As you pull from different angles, you can release the clips. So, in here, nope, here, here, here. Okay, these clips don't really want to come out. So, let's see, how are we going to do this? Let's try and do it sideways like this. Oops, did I turn it on again? <laughs> okay. Oh no, it's doing some updates? Why is it doing updates? I told it to shut down without updating. Anyways, um, I can actually see the clips here. They're going up. Sorry, let me turn off this focus thing. Okay, so the clips are going up into this side. So that means basically you'd want to pull this side down and out. So sometimes bowing the center would work. So I'm going to push closer to the top and pull closer to the bottom with my fingers here. Um, but the problem is I think there's a clip here as well. Yeah, hmm. I might have to wait for this update to finish because if it's using a spinning hard drive, you don't want the sudden shock and vibration from pulling clips. So let me let this thing shut down completely and I'll be back. All right, just my luck. Just as I went to go shut off the recording, the computer shut down. So now I'm going to have to stitch the parts of the video together. Anyways, let's go ahead and try and pull this out. So I'm pulling down on this side and pulling but it seems pretty strong. So I can actually use like a little pry tool to make this easier, um, basically going up like this, okay? But uh, it does seem like it's still holding really strong. So, hmm, let's see, what else can I do? I mean, I can, it would be easier if I close the screen, but then I'm gonna have to open it again. Um, I guess let's go ahead and carefully close the screen. So to close this because the hinge is broken, I'm pushing down on this to keep the hinge down towards the back and then swinging this over. So we're going to continue. Oh, the broken hinge is on this side actually. So we're going to continue pushing down and pulling it. I'm actually pulling it in this way as I'm pushing it down and there you go. Okay, so we got this side back here that we can now have access to. So I'm going to be pulling this up and sliding my fingernail here and see if I can pop that. And no, these clips are what in the world. <laughs> okay, let's try the suction cup here and pull my fingernail there. And that's working. And there we go. Okay. So yeah, this cover is a huge pain in the butt to remove, but uh, we got it. There you go. Um, the customer did also mention that their battery was bad and I can actually see physically visually that it's inflated so that's bad and uh, battery model number is here ht03xl all right and we're going to be using i think a js1 screwdriver to remove this all right so let me switch over okay again keep all the screws in order because they can be different size shape and lengths we got this oh, actually let me get a screenshot for this or thumbnail okay so let me center this all right and there we go give it a few seconds all right um let's go ahead and get the battery out 
again keep all the screws in order because they can be different size shape and lengths and yeah all right let's go ahead and make this out and first thing i'm going to do is be uh is repairing the hinge with some jb weld that kind of thing uh has to sit overnight uh 15 hours so yeah it's going to take a couple days for this to be repaired i'm going to have to order a battery as well once you remove the screws you have these spots here just pull straight up and then you can take the battery out all right this is again the battery there's also an hp spare part number but usually i just use the battery model number and that's good enough and you can see it's all inflated and bloated okay um i don't really need to take out all the other parts after doing that we're gonna have to um um open it up and then press and hold the power button to drain any residual power to make it safer to work on. All right, I'm gonna have to carefully open this up again. So let me get this thin tool in here to help hold where the hinge is. We're gonna carefully open up the screen. I'm putting my finger as close as I can to the actual hinge area. Now that we've got it open slightly, I can kind of actually get my hand in there and then keep the hinge held down while I open this up. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna press and hold the power button here for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This makes it a lot safer to work on. And if you're gonna be messing with the LCD LVDS connector, it's actually very important. Uh, you don't wanna skip this step. It only takes 15 seconds um, if you don't do it. I mean, there's a chance you can get away with it, but there's a very high risk, so why risk it? All right, anyways, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, I'm going to adjust the camera somewhere over here. All right. Also, if you can't help that way, um, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos. Maybe you can learn some more stuff and also... Um, yeah, like and comment on them because YouTube likes to see that. All right, anyways, next thing we're going to do, we're going to disconnect the LCD LVDS connector. We're going to flip this latch. Sorry, I can't really zoom in too well because of the way I have to have it hanging off the desk. Um, but anyways, once you flip that latch, you can go ahead and pull this cable out. You might have to like angle the back up slightly. And they put all this dumb adhesive here. So we're going to have to peel this up. And sadly, it's probably not going to go back on nicely, but let's see. All right, so it came out that way. And then we can unroute the cabling there. Okay, and then we're going to also have to remove the wireless antennas. If you've been watching my other videos, you'll know um, you just lift straight up from the tail and it pops out. All right, just like this. Um, on some of these, it's somewhat common for the solder to be not too good here for these connectors. So you don't want to just be prying up the wireless antennas unless you actually have to because otherwise if that antenna gets messed up you're not going to have Wi-Fi and possibly Bluetooth. Alright anyways we got the wireless antennas, we got the LCD LVDS connector which um, acts as the screen connector as well as the um, touch screen I believe and camera and everything because there's only one cable. Um, now we're going to be removing these screws. They actually have little arrows like stamped into the metal here. So you can tell uh, which ones are supposed to have screws because the other ones, um, the bottom cover actually uh, gets the screws through. So that's the ones that were hidden underneath the rubber feet. Um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and remove the screws from all the hinges. So four screws, two on each. All right, and once we do that, we should be able to lift the screen up and out just like this, okay? So there we go, we got the screen out. We're gonna have to repair this with some JB Weld. So we'll set that aside. And then um, here you can see inside, I can now actually zoom in a lot better here. So let me adjust the camera. I don't have to have it hanging over the edge of the desk anymore for this laptop. And I'm just gonna zoom in and kind of go over some of the main components you got the dc jack or charge port here so that runs along this all the way over here and plugs in right there make sure you take note of the red and um uh black wires and other wires you don't want to plug this in upside down or with the cables flipped over okay you got this cable flat ribbon cable going over to the two usb ports here um as well as well i guess that's not Part of it the lock is a separate thing it's just a piece of metal here um the dc jack if you need to remove it usually i have to use like 
a thin this kind of thin tool or something to get in the edge and then to help pull this out or I guess you can also grab the cable and just yank it up and you should be able to pop it out um, there might be this little clip I think this little clip might be holding it in place so you might have to kind of try and pull this aside um, but that's usually why I'll go from this side and pry it up so that way it flips this way instead of trying to pull against the clip all right um, what else you got another little ribbon cable down here connecting for the SD card slot okay and you can see these boards are all replaceable there's just like a screw one or two screws holding it in all right there's an m.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here one screw once you remove that screw you can actually pull it up slightly and pull it back and yes this is SSD not a spinning hard drive so I guess I could have removed the cover while it was doing its thing it does have room for a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here I don't know they didn't include the metal bracket or the connector but the motherboard does have a place to put it so if you want if you really want a second hard drive in here you can actually buy the bracket and everything but I would save my money on the bracket and the connector and all of that and just upgrade to a larger uh, M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD because these SSDs are faster so I wouldn't waste the money on a secondary drive bracket and all of that just get a larger SSD and upgrade that because if you're going to spend the money on a two and a half inch SATA SSD as well as the brackets and everything you might as well just get an NVMe all right, anyways, here's the wireless card here. This is a Intel model 9560NGW. Okay, there's some other model information there. If you really want it, pop yours open, take a look. Um, here's the fan here. Um, you can grab the, usually the way I remove this, um, this one's a little bit tricky because there's not really solid wings to grab. So usually I use my fingernails like in the little edge there and wiggle and pull it, um, but I'm gonna leave that in there. All right, the fan looks like you don't have to remove the heat sink to get to it, to remove it. There's three screws, then you can pull that up. All right, CPU is underneath the heat sink over here. Um, it has a giant heat sink. I guess some models have a GPU here. You can actually see where the GPU uh, and the memory would go. And then for those models, it looks like there would be a second uh, fan. This is one of the speakers, and then a cable runs along underneath here. Um, all the way to this speaker and then the speaker actually connects there all right you got two sticks of ram or two slots for ram but they're only using one um, but basically you pull the two tabs to the side it pops up and you can pull this out and this is an 8 gig pc4 2666v um, you can upgrade to whatever you want as long as it's pc4 2666v you should be okay um, if you want i believe they have up to a 32 gig stick maybe but uh, yeah, um, you can put two 16 gig sticks. I don't know, 32 gigs, if they do have it, it's gonna be crazy expensive. So probably two 16 gig sticks would already be plenty for pretty much 99.9999% of people. All right, <clears throat> um, what else? You got the touchpad or trackpad connector here, keyboard cable connector here. Um, the keyboard is held in place with these melted plastic things, so if you're going to be replacing the keyboard, it's best to replace the whole palm rest keyboard uh, assembly. Um, but if all you can find is the keyboard, or if you want to try and save a little money and then do it the difficult way, you can try and get all these melted plastic pieces out, and then you got to kind of like glue it back in or something. So um, yeah, trust me, it's a pain. I have videos where I do that on some models. It's not fun. All right, here's the um, keyboard backlight cable, and I think that's pretty much everything. I think I mentioned everything in here. So yeah, um, all that's left for me to do now is to figure out how to fix this hinge. Um, and I've worked on a lot of these designed, um, let me zoom out here. So I've worked on a lot of these HP screen um, models because they have this same, like they'll use some adhesive under here and clips and it's a pain to get this piece off, but we have to get it out to work on it. So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, we only have to get out one side. So, well actually, we're gonna just take the whole thing out because I don't know if we can do just one side. So I like to use fingernails because I can just like slowly carefully pry this up and feel how much pressure is going on pry tools kind of you can't feel it as well but basically I'm just getting in this um, gap 
and pulling this plastic bezel up. Okay, just slowly, carefully. Okay, and we're gonna go on the side as well and I'm rotating it this way, so pulling the inside up and twisting and pushing it uh, the outside inwards. And that's the best way to kind of pop this frame out. I'm not gonna completely remove this frame, I'm just gonna remove it enough to where I can actually work on the hinge unless I have to. So let's go ahead and see. Um, yeah, usually I don't have to pull this whole hinge out, I don't think. Um, we might be able to leave the top intact. Also, there's a plastic film that's um, that sticks down to the screen and then the adhesive in between kind of pulls it up. So you wanna actually push that film down onto the screen, don't peel that up because that's covering the circuit board for the LCD. So I slide my finger across so that way it breaks or pulls the adhesive away from that. Um, but you want to be careful not to make it put too much pressure on the screen because you don't want to um, crack the glass trying to separate that. Okay, so here you can see we got this mostly lifted up. Okay, and this is coming out and here we go. So we don't need to remove the rest. Um, and here's how it broke. There's three, oops, see these things all just break. So basically there's th the screw mounts but there's not enough leverage to hold this because they keep trying to shrink this bezel piece. Um, and basically it's kind of like if you're grabbing someone's hand and twisting like this, it's a lot more difficult than if you grab someone's finger and like twist it like that. So this piece is too thin and narrow. So basically as you move the hinge, this thing requires a lot of force to move. Um, and no, you don't wanna loosen it. The reason being if you loosen the hinge, what's holding up the screen. Like the screen's just gonna flop over. Like it needs a lot of force to keep, to hold that screen from all the way down here. Imagine trying to grab here and stop someone from bending their hand like this. Like you can't, it's impossible. So the hinge has to be really tight like that or it's just gonna end up breaking. Um, and here's what this piece looks like. It looks like there's no clips on this side. There are clips on this side, but the plastic that went in here is broken. So, the two clips here do seem okay, but the plastic that goes in here to kind of align it is broken, but hopefully um, we'll be able to get it to click in. So this stuff, it you can see the plastic broke. It's not strong enough to hold that. And yeah, um, you can see we can even push this kind of through even with that excess plastic there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually replace this stuff with JB Weld. Oops. And Oh, I didn't mean to throw the whole screw away. Um, but yeah, we're going to be refilling or replacing the broken stuff with JB Weld. And yeah, getting rid of this screw mechanism because this screw mechanism is bad design. Um, there's too many. I worked on so many laptops with this same design. I don't know who whose idea it is to make it this way because obviously everybody's copying each other. Like... HP has this problem, Dell has this problem, Lenovo has this problem. Um, they're all having this problem and they're all building it this way. I don't know if it's intentional to make it break on purpose after a certain amount of time or what, but uh, it's definitely like everybody's doing the same exact design. Maybe they're like, hey, it worked for them, why don't we do it? But it doesn't work for them, so don't do it, please. Um, anyways. Uh, I guess I'll look for that screw later. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're going to have to use some JB Weld, mix it up, and we're going to fill this little area with that along with the screw. Um, you do want to be careful not to like glue the screen onto it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get some tape. Okay. This sounds kind of annoying. We're going to clean all this dust and debris out. Okay. And what I'm going to do, um, let's see, I'm going to get a little box or something and just put it in this gap here. Do you have a good one? Okay, I have a little box here I can put in. Let me close this up. Okay, so I'm going to put this little box here just so it holds it out of my way. I don't know if you guys, uh, I guess it's not up enough for you guys to see. So I'm not too sure how I can show this. I'd have to also tilt this up like this somehow, but that's raised up really high. So I don't know if putting this box further over, I don't want to end up damaging stuff. Here you can see the plastic I was talking about that's supposed to be attached to the screen. 
and it tells you don't touch under there so yeah anyways like I said that area is fragile okay anyways um, I'm gonna mix up some JB weld and then I guess I'll show you guys this um, it's pretty straightforward and yeah let me cut a piece of tape here so I can kind of show you how I protect the screen and then um, the reassembly uh, I guess we can I'll reassemble it and then show that as well but okay let me cut a piece of tape here just to protect that area okay we don't again we don't want the JB weld getting all in there um, if you're wondering how you remove the screen here if you see oops sorry if you see this little white um, oh it's really hard to see it in the camera so this little piece here there's a white um, adhesive so this is like a sticky um, stretch release adhesive so what you do is you kind of pinch and grab that little tab there and then you can actually pull it straight down and as you stretch it like you want to pull it uh, parallel to this um, as flat as you can and as you pull it it will release the adhesive and it'll stretch really far so keep that in mind you're just gonna be um, stretching and stretching all right anyways let's go ahead and get a piece of tape here and then we're going to go ahead and just cover that so that the epoxy doesn't get on it. The problem also is though, um, the epoxy is probably going to get onto, um, get onto that adhesive spot that I was mentioning. So I'm not too sure how we'll prevent that from happening. I guess I can put the adhesive over this way as well. So I can wrap it down flat like this oops sorry you can't even see what I'm doing but I'm gonna wrap it flat down like that okay over that adhesive piece and I'm gonna try and um, put that as sharp into this as possible so that the adhesive is completely flat and then we're just gonna fold that over we're not gonna put a crazy amount of adhesive that it's gonna overflow that much um, but we just want to make sure, okay, this is hard to do while recording, so let's see, I'm going to cut it here, and hopefully that's good enough. There's a moth, and my cat's trying to grab it. Okay, so um, basically I rolled that edge over. You can actually see where it's shiny, and I'm going to put a little more from the other for the other side as well, just to kind of protect that, okay? So, Venus, what are you doing? Okay, so we're going to grab that, and I'm going to put this over this way. Okay, try and keep it flat against the edge of the LCD panel, and then wrap that. Oh, I actually cut too tall, so. All right, so I'm going to stick that on the edge, and I need to cut that even shorter. Venus, what are you doing? I'm going to cut that shorter because it's going to overlap onto the screen, and then we won't it's gonna be like in the way so we'll do that cut that oops sorry cut that shorter roll that over all right and I'm gonna put some over this way as well just to be safe all right because I don't want that going into the board of the um, screen okay so we'll grab this and we'll cut that Venus what are you doing okay and I think for this case, um, you can actually have it overlap more if you want, but I'll try, try to cut it as perfect as I wanted, I mean, as I could. All right, and we'll just wrap that over this way. Okay, so now we have this protecting the screen from having any issues with the adhesive. All right, oops, I should have paid attention to the antennas. I don't remember, does it come out through the center that way? It's kind of weird. All right, anyways, we're gonna clean off this a little bit. We don't want dust on it, causing it to not get a good adhesion. Um, you can also clean it up with um, a little isopropyl alcohol, which is what I'm going to do. Just get a piece of paper towel. Okay, we're gonna get some isopropyl alcohol, pour that on there. Venus, what are you doing? All right, and then we're gonna wipe this down just to get any grease off of it. Okay.
Okay. And also for this design, they tried to improve it by adding this little bar here that goes extends up the side. But as you can see, it just snaps off, so it doesn't really hold very well. Okay, anyways, um, the difficult part with this is kind of deciding how much JB Weld to put. We're going to try and fill, oops, we're going to try and fill all these little screw mount holes. And we might even put a little bit here. I'm going to use a thin film. Um, the best place to actually hold this piece in place is as close to the hinge area as possible. So the hinge mechanism spinning is here. So actually you need more strength holding on this side, but they didn't put a screw here, which dumb design. Um, so what we're going to do is when we get this in, I'm probably going to put some JB Weld at least underneath here. I can't really fill up this area. Um, well, actually I could. So I can put a little bit of JB Weld in this little crack here, but I'm a little worried it's going to pull on this board a little bit, but it should be okay. All right, so yeah, we need enough to fill these three holes and then a little bit over there, and we should be good. Um, JB Weld holds a lot stronger than whatever this plastic is that they glued into here. And you can even see some of the plastic just tore away from the back panel. So anyways, we're gonna set this aside, mix up some JB Weld, and then we can stick the thing, put it all back together. Okay, and again, we're gonna need some a thin film. You can use like saran wrap or whatever you wanna call it, plastic cling wrap. And yeah, all right, so my JB Weld, we got this, and I need to get my mixing set here. So give me a second, let me go grab that. Oh, actually, here it is. Okay, I was like, where'd it go? All right, so here we go. I just use a toothpick, and then as you can see, one side I use for the black, one side for the white. I do have to wipe it off with paper towel as I go. But uh, yeah, and then I use this little screwdriver that I kind of like covered with <laughs> JB Weld to make it a smooth finish. All right, so we're gonna do the white part first because it's a little bit thicker, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and squeeze up from the bottom. You don't need to buy a giant tube like this, but I feel for the money it's much makes more sense, okay? So this is probably more than enough. Um, because most of the plastic is there, so we're just kind of like filling the little gap and then having it overfill to cover as if a screw is on top, but instead the JB Weld is. Okay, let's wipe off this. Then we're going to flip it over, switch over to the black part. Okay, and we're going to try and get as even amount as possible here. It's a little bit tricky, but it's important. Okay, so... Here we go. Okay, hopefully that's an even amount. All right. Close this up. And after working with this stuff so, so much, I can kind of tell when I have a good mix based on the color, the final color of the JB Weld. If it's too white, I can tell I need to add more of the black part. Um, but yeah, if this is your first time, you kind of want to, I don't know, it's a little bit tricky. <laughs> and I don't know if the camera will pick up the exact gray shade, whatever you're watching it on. Um, so you can see right now, this is, oh yeah, it looks like too black in the camera. So it's a dark gray. Um, so that's the color you want. I don't know why in the camera, I guess because all the surrounding areas are white, it's uh, basically reducing the brightness to compensate for that issue. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mix all of this together. You wanna mix it really well, make sure there's no streaks of colors just um, in there. You want it all completely mixed, homogenous solution. All right, mixture, go. I like using this clear thing because I could look at the bottom and make sure that I mix it all really well. Okay, and it looks good. So let me see if I can get a good idea for you guys of the color. So if I put my hand here, maybe that will help. Okay, so 
yeah, it's basically like a somewhat dark gray. I don't know what color, what to compare it to. Um, here you can see the silver hinge cover for comparison. But uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and get the hinge in there. So hopefully the other side's not going to break um, because I don't want to rip that out since it's holding okay right now. Um, yeah, anyways, we're going to try and get this record this for you guys so you can see all right so here you can see where the little screw mounts were so what I do is I just get a bunch on the screwdriver tip or whatever you're using to put that on and we're just gonna fill the little gap there like that fill that gap there like that and another blob this one because the plastic's missing we're probably gonna probably gonna need a lot more so we'll put this and blob it all in there. You can actually fill it all into here since we protected it with the tape. Okay. And this stuff will kind of ooze out over the hinge when we go to put it back in. Um, and yeah, and then you can kind of smooth it out. The plastic wrap on top will prevent it from sticking to other components. And then we should be good. All right, I'm going to put some over here. Since we're permanently adhering this in, keep in mind that if you need to um, take out the wireless antennas or anything, um, it's going to be stuck in there. Um, if you do need to really need to remove it, the one way to do it is you can kind of heat from the back with a lighter. When this stuff gets really hot or reaches a certain temperature, then it becomes softer and then you might be able to like rip the hinge out. So um, if you really need to rip it back out, that's one way to try and do it. All right, so now that we got all the epoxy in there, we're gonna get this piece back in. You can line it up with the little metal piece over here and push that down. And here you can see it's oozing up and going out over the edges here. And that's what we want. Okay, we're probably gonna put some in the little edges over where the screen is as well, just to make sure. Um, so I actually mixed up way too much of the epoxy, but all right. So we're gonna move this stuff around to kind of have it overlap. You can also pour it down in the edges here. All right, I probably should have put more. So I'm gonna pull the hinge up and then try and get it to flow underneath there. Um, so that way it makes a solid connection to the top layer. So here you can see it's pushing the outer thing up. That's good. Then we're going to go ahead and push that down. And now it flowed all around everywhere. That's what we want. That's the best solid connection. And this one is closest to where the hinge um, moving mechanism is. So this is the most important screw um, part that we can hold down. All right. The outer ones here don't really hold much um, because all the force goes into that one first. And this is just to pick up where it starts flexing. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, you don't really need too much crazy enforcement over outside here because of that, okay? All right, so now if we can get some more over down here. And I think we should be good. I'm going to fill in where it has that little plastic bump that sticks up. There's a little hole there. And the um, plastic bump goes there. Sorry, I don't know if my head's getting in the way. Hopefully not. Okay, so there we go. We got that all filled up with the JB Weld. Um, and we're basically, again, I'm going to put some plastic cling wrap stuff over this. I actually have the... When I buy some screens and stuff, sometimes they wrap it with this plastic stretchy uh, film that's kind of um, sticks to itself really well. It's a little thicker than cling wrap, but it works really well for this. Um, cling wrap is sometimes a little bit too thin to where when you go to try and like lay it down, it like just folds over on itself really easily. This stuff also does that, but um, at least it's a little bit more maneuverable. So that's why I kind of keep this stuff and use it all right so we're gonna try and get this lined up over here and let's see so it actually has somewhat of like this shape you can see how I cut like there's a little corner missing over there so it'll work well because the we don't need to cover up up here okay 
Um, all right, so we're gonna grab this and we're gonna try and get it over there. It's a little bit difficult at this weird angle trying to get it on camera. I don't know if you guys can even see it on camera, but uh, we'll get that in and try and pull that, okay. And if some of it comes out, that's okay. You can always rip this stuff out later um, because we're covering it. It's not gonna stick to the bottom of this. So we can actually peel this thing back up and then um, align it. So make sure that you're covering all of that JB Weld. Hey Venus. You don't want any of that to stick to the bottom of the, or the bezel, all right? So there we go, we got that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put this little cover back on. So just get this lined up. Okay, and this can be a little pain. So let's see here. Again, it's more difficult for me because I'm trying to record this for you guys. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's appreciated what I'm doing here. All right, this um, little hinge piece it has a little piece that protrudes out here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but you have to make sure to line that up down here. Um, otherwise, it won't go in. So it's, I'm trying to do this. It's a little tricky, and hopefully you guys can see. Okay. Come on. Okay. So it's so tricky to kind of try and do this like that. Let's see. I'm wondering if normally you would do this while the hinge is out of the computer and then, I mean, like the screws aren't in it. Maybe that's why they didn't put a screw at the on this side because this piece is in the way for that. I don't know. Wait. This antenna is not coming through right. Um, okay, it goes down that way. Okay, I think I got it lined up right. And then we just gotta twist it over and get it to click. There we go. Okay, so we got that in. Next thing, we gotta get this bezel piece back in and it can be a little bit tricky. Let me actually zoom out here now because we're done looking directly at the hinge. So this, we got to kind of twist it this way and pull it back. Um, that's why I had to remove like a lot of this, these little clips, All right? And then once you do that, you can kind of get it back in. Make sure the clips down here get lined up properly. You can kind of try and click those in first, okay? Just like that, all right? And then we can work our way clicking all this stuff down. All right, so we can work our way here. And basically the opposite, I'm pushing on the outer edge, which basically rotates it up like that and gets it to click back in. Um, basically um, the same kind of motion of how we had to release it. And we're gonna work our way down and get that all clicked in, there we go. All right, and then usually for this, I like to let it set overnight. Um, so that way I can make sure that the hinge will set properly. If I put it back in the computer, um, it's a little bit tricky. Um, but if you do put it back on the computer, you actually wanna, like I was showing earlier, how to close the screen. Um, you can do that to make sure that it closes right. Um, usually the only time I'll do that is if the alignment is not possible because the, too much of the plastic broke. In this case, there was the little um, plastic that stuck up to align this part of the hinge that was still there. And then because it hits all the way to the outer edge, I don't have to worry about it. Like there's no wiggle to this if it's in that specific spot. So as you can see the hinge right now, it stays in the proper place. But if I pull on it and it pops up like at an angle, then it's gonna move out of the proper alignment. So um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave it like this to set overnight, and then I'm gonna reassemble it tomorrow. Um, so I'll make a video showing the reassembly. Um, I guess it'll all be in the same video, so. <laughs> Anyways, for now, that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys in a bit.
But yeah, like, subscribe, comment, share my channel with others, watch a few of my other videos, and I'll see you guys when I put this back for you. It's just going to be like right now. All right, bye. For All right, so now that the epoxy has had time to set completely and we have the battery, let's go ahead and reassemble this thing. There's a little dust here, but I think it's trapped under a clear layer, so... Yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and put this thing back together. So we're going to rotate this back over here. Move that junk out of the way. Hang this over the edge of the desk. All right. So much dust on the screen. All right, so here you can see the hinge. It's strong enough that I can, like, twist it by hand, and it holds in place. Same with the old one, okay? Hopefully the old one doesn't break, um, or the one that I didn't do anything to doesn't break. Um, but yeah, all right, so we're gonna get this and drop it back into place. Am I doing something weird here? Let's see here. Get those cables up out of the way. Okay, there we go. Drop that in. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and get the screws back in, again, using the JIS-1 screwdriver. Okay, again, they do have arrows pointing to where the screws came from, so make sure you put them in the right spots. So I got that one, tighten that down, and this one, tighten that down. If you want, you can add a little thread locker um, to keep the screws from coming a little bit loose over time. There's a little bit of the blue stuff on there still. Um, but yeah, sometimes with these designs, I don't really like to put thread locker because when the if the plastic breaks that holds those things in place, it's nearly impossible to get it out after that. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this tightened in. Okay, so now that we've got the screws for the hinges tightened in, I'm going to rest it on its back, and then I'm going to use my thumbs pressing on the hinge area and over here to help turn it to close it, just like that. And you can see it works perfectly. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom back in. Fix the camera here so you can see this. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and thread the LCD LVDS cable back into place and get that plugged back in. Okay, there we go, and then latch that down. Okay, good. Um, if you want, you can actually, I think this is supposed to have the screw going through it. Let's see, can we actually have it reach that far still? Okay, so pull that in, and then yeah. Okay, so let's have that screw um, go back in. I think it was that one. I don't know, it could be also this one, but we're gonna go ahead and put it on this one. So line that up and pull that over and we'll get this screw in. You can see this thing is actually all stretched out, so the screw's probably not even gonna really sit on it, but let me push some of it to tuck under there. All right, there we go. Uh, I probably should have zoomed in more because it's probably hard to see. We have the wireless antennas now. Get that all routed up. Okay, perfect. And then we're going to get these in. So this one has a one and two. One goes to the white or auxiliary one, and then two goes to the main. So we're going to plug the black wire to the white arrow. Okay, and then the black... Oh, actually, they're both black, and then number two to the main. Okay. All right. So make sure you get this lined up properly before you push it down. There we go. Okay, now we got that all lined up and clicked into place. We're good to go. Let's zoom out again. We do need to put in the new battery. We got a replacement. As mentioned, it's the HT03XL, I believe. All right, HT. Yep. All right, so aftermarket battery here. We'll get this. Line that up, okay, and then just line this up and push that down. You can pinch this to kind of push the pins closer further in. And then, not many screws left. We got four screws holding the battery in, so let's get that. Got that one screw. I'm going to loosely fit it just in case it needs to shift a little bit when we get these screws. So we got that one, and then we got this one. Okay, and we got this one. Let's go ahead and tighten that down. Tighten this down. Tighten this guy down. And tighten this guy down. Alright, so now we got all four screws back in. We just need to put the bottom cover in and we should be ready to go. Um, if I didn't already mention, um, the 
what do you call here, um, the main battery also acts as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, we're going to click this in. Once you remove that battery, if you go to turn it back on, it does end up taking a while to power back up because of that. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and now click all this back into place. Make sure the center is all clicked in and everything. I'm actually pushing inwards as well as pushing down at the same time. Okay, to clip, get the clips back in proper place. And that looks good. So let me actually zoom out a little bit more. Let's go ahead now and get all the screws back in and we should be good to go. All right. So we can flip this over and we'll get these three back in. Okay. Okay, and then the front ones are um, JS0, and then the ones where the hinges are are JS1. So keep that in mind. Don't use the same screwdriver for both or you'll end up damaging the screwdriver or the screws. Okay, and if you damage the screws, you won't be able to get them out. Anyways, that's pretty much it. We're going to put the rubber pieces back and we're good to go. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing well to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, it'd help a lot if you could um, watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those because that's what the algorithm likes to see. And yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. We're going to power it up. Hopefully this battery has power. Maybe it doesn't. I might have to plug this in. So let me get the plug real quick. We're going to plug it in because I think it doesn't have any power and I'll be back. All right, give me a second. All right, so I got their charger. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see if we have any life. Charge light is orange, so let's power it on. Power light is on. All right, again, it can take some time to power up because the new battery, or not because the new battery, but because we replaced or disconnected the battery. Um, that's normal, and that's because the BIOS or CMOS, whatever you want to call, RTC is reset. Here you go. CMOS reset, and then it says press enter to continue. So that's pretty much it. It should be good. Make sure to reset the date and time because, again, once the BIOS and CMOS is reset, the date and time is going to be reset. So we'll give it a little more time just to see Windows start up, and then we should be good to go. There you go. You see the HP logo. I'm going to put this out of view because it might show the customer's username, and sometimes they don't like that to be shown. So, yeah. But other than that, looks like we're good to go. Screen and hinge is working well. Guess it's finishing some updates here, but you can see the entire screen's good. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.